All right, peeps, this is going to be a little Blair Witch-esque vlog. Uh, I was having a discussion with a family member, and we started talking about COVID, the pandemic, because what else are you going to talk about during Christmas? Oh, three years into this pandemic. And I dropped a, a statistic that I then had to immediately go fact check myself on. I'm talking and I say, uh, do you not find it odd that the flu basically disappeared during COVID? And then I was immediately challenged, that's not true. And I was like, I'm gonna go fact check myself just to make sure. And lo and behold, I went down a rabbit hole. My wife has been saying that I've got to think about something else. But for those of you who are not afflicted with OCD or ADHD or whatever obsessive compulsive disorder it is, I have gone down a rabbit hole of this piece of information that I knew that I knew that I've never really stopped to think about in thorough detail. For those of you who don't know, the flu, which killed, I don't know, close to, I want to say 60,000 people in the U.S. in 2017 to 2018, was apparently like the worst flu season uh, worldwide. In 2018, the flu season was so bad in Canada that they were canceling elective surgeries at hospitals because hospitals were overwhelmed. But I think it was 2016 to 2017 or 2017 to 2018 that was a wildly um, virulent strain of the flu that killed tens of thousands of people, and I think the number is close to 60,000. You then fast forward to 2020 to 2021, the number was not even reported in a statistica, um, statistics about the flu deaths for that year. Like it goes oddly enough from 2018 to 2019, 2019 to 2020, then 2021 to 2022. It skips the 2020 to 2021 year, and even more suspicious, in 2021 to 2022, they reported like 5,000 flu deaths in America, which is like a quarter of what it was during a typical flu season. And you read articles and they do not hide the fact that they are trying to convince the general population, the general public, that the flu all but disappeared during COVID. From Scientific American, flu has disappeared for more than a year. Mask wearing, social distancing, and other steps to stop COVID-19 have also curtailed influenza. That would seem to suggest that it also curtailed COVID-19. Oh, and then by the way, in pure gaslighting fashion, barely eight months later, the fact checkers say, fact check, influenza virus is still active, hasn't quote, disappeared, end quote. Can you believe the gaslighting? They are trying to make us think that we are going crazy. So I was not misremembering. It was in fact a correct memory, a correct understanding. The flu disappeared during COVID. Then I immediately began thinking, don't want to go down the conspiratorial rabbit hole. How could that be? And I began listening to people's explanations. I remember at the time, uh, originally when I had heard this statistic, the flu disappeared and I questioned it back in the day. His name is Z Dog MD. Uh, he had an explanation that during, uh, you know, a pandemic where you have competing respiratory viruses, obviously that which is more contagious is going to be the one that wins out. So hence in the battle between COVID and influenza, COVID was more contagious. Therefore, COVID, uh, you know, defeated influenza, uh, eradicating it effectively. Now let's go back to SARS-CoV-2. In this case, SARS completely supplanted influenza and you know RSV and these other upper airway you know infections that happen the same time of year so could it be that it's a mix of everything so we've shut down schools we we've we've closed air travel we've social distanced we've masked but then we've also got a large percentage of the population that is infected or has been infected with SARS-CoV-2 fired up interferon response and suppressed the rest off the circulating respiratory viruses, preventing this twindemic that we were talking about. Other people posit, and I mean like other people, experts, studies. I read a, a, a summary of a study out of Harvard, which was hypothesizing that the reason influenza didn't spread and why we had virtually none of it, virtually none, uh, since the outbreak of the COVID pandemic was because of social distancing, face masking, hygiene measures that were imposed on society as a whole. It basically eradicated uh, influenza, that's how effective it was. From a publication in Harvard School of Public Health, a sharp drop in flu cases during COVID-19 pandemic. Precautions taken to fight the COVID-19 pandemic, including wearing masks and distancing, are likely the major reason for a steep decline in flu cases in the US, according to experts. <laughs> experts. Okay, then how did it not work on COVID? 
I mean, the, the, you have to make that make sense. That's a square peg in a circle hole or whatever the expression is. Okay, the social distancing, hygiene, face masking measures were so effective, it eradicated influenza. And in one season, we magically made it drop to virtually zero, and yet it had no impact whatsoever on preventing the spread of COVID, or maybe it, did. Maybe it would have been 10 times worse had we not done this, but it had very little impact seemingly. And according to a New York Times article, the face masks did nothing. Did we learn a lesson? So the measures worked for influenza, but not for COVID. You got to make that make sense. Some people are saying, well, influenza spreads through bigger droplets. I don't know, closer contact. COVID was a much more contagious virus. And therefore, uh, even these social distancing face masking measures, which worked on influenza, didn't work on COVID. Okay, then why in the name of God's green earth would we continue with these measures if... Though effective against influenza, interesting enough, not effective against COVID, we continue with these measures. It makes no sense. It cannot make sense. And these are all just perfectly logical questions to be asked in the light of these statistics, which we are being told is the case. I go to the, the Harvard study. Their biggest concern was not how to explain away the fact that influenza dropped to basically zero because of these very effective measures which didn't work on COVID. Their concern was, let's just bypass that altogether. Let's just jump over that and worry about what's coming with future influenza uh, seasons because people hadn't been exposed to influenza for the last couple of years. Kissler, the expert, also discussed how lower flu prevalence this year creates uncertainties about how the virus will evolve in the future. Quote, we have no idea how obliterating the flu for an entire year affects its evolution, end quote, he said. Quote, we don't know if it's going to be easier to predict next year's flu strain because it hasn't been spreading as much or if it's going to be a lot harder because it's gone through this really tight evolution bottleneck end quote that's the concern not trying to explain away how all of this could possibly make sense the most logical conclusion and it's the one that uh, I think our viva Barnes law dot locals dot com community the above average community there uh, hypothesizes and can offer some good evidence for my bottom line conclusion is the only one that makes sense I think is that basically either they weren't testing for the flu during COVID and only testing for COVID and or they were just lumping all flu cases as COVID, lumping all flu infections, hospitalizations, deaths as COVID. Why would they be doing that? Show me the money! Well, there was this uh, unfortunate reality of financial incentives or at least financial compensation for COVID during a pandemic public health crisis. Hospitals were being compensated bonuses, premiums, amounts for COVID hospitalizations, uh, for putting people on respirators. From an AP fact check, in thinking they were debunking another claim, this is what they actually admit. Hospital COVID payments tied to patient treatment, not deaths. Oh, please do go on, AP. AP's assessment, false. Hospital industry officials and public health experts confirmed the federal government provides hospitals with enhanced payments for treating COVID-19 patients, but the payments are only currently applicable to those on Medicare. The enhanced payments, which are slated to end in May also aren't contingent on a patient's death, but on the treatment or services provided to the patients, they said. They were being offered a financial compensation for these COVID infections. Whether or not that would influence people to reflexively or even, dare I say, potentially inaccurately label a, a uh, influenza hospitalization as a COVID because look, they're in there for something respiratory. Anyhow, it's sort of uh, uh, you know, a symptom determined uh, diagnosis in any event. Why not? We're gonna get a little bit of a financial incentive. Well, you read of one fact check in particular, which is shocked and outraged at the idea that there might've been some indirect subconscious incentivizing to um, overstate COVID hospitalizations, COVID deaths because of this financial incentive. They said no, no one would ever do that. It, it was fact checked false. No hospitals are not lying about COVID infections and COVID deaths for monetary gain. You notice how they impute intention and they impute causality so as to jump over, just bypass the observation itself, which was whether or not Hospitals were in fact being financially incentivized for COVID diagnoses, COVID deaths, respiratory uh, treatments, etc. From factcheck.org, the most reliable of fact checkers, and yes, I'm being sarcastic, hospital payments and the COVID-19 death count. Posted on April 21, 2020. My, we really didn't have much information at the time now, did we? Are hospitals inflating the number of COVID-19 cases and deaths so they can be paid more?
Numerous readers have asked us about such claims, some of which imply that hospitals are making money by simply listing patients as having the disease, when in fact the payments referenced are for treating patients. And while some of the posts imply that fraud may be afoot, multiple experts told us that such theories of hospitals deliberately miscoding patients as COVID-19 patients are not supported by the evidence. <laughs> Quote, there's an implication here that hospitals are over-reporting their COVID patients because they have an economic advantage in doing so, which is really an outrageous claim, end quote. Gerald Kominsky, senior fellow at the UCLA Center for Health Policy Research, told us. And he said any suggestion that patients may be put on ventilators out of financial gain, not medical need, quote, is basically saying physicians are violating their Hippocratic oath. It would be like providing heart surgery on someone who doesn't need it, end quote. One fact check that I read said doctors wouldn't falsely diagnose someone with COVID because that would violate their Hippocratic oath. To which I immediately think, if I can find a doctor who's going to lop off the healthy breasts of a young girl in the name of gender-affirming care, I'll find an unscrupulous doctor that's going to misdiagnose someone with COVID if it means that they're going to get whatever thousands of dollars uh, bonus compensation uh, because of the healthcare system and the way it's been set up. When you financially incentivize something, you don't have to coerce. It just becomes part of the system. And just to add something here as I edit while I walk back from the cornfield, financial motivation is not the only type of relevant motivation. You can have fear as a... Uh, very important motivating factor here because I've interviewed people who have confirmed that at the time, whether or not they were slapping patients on ventilators for whatever extra financial gain they might get, they were doing it even if it wasn't necessarily in the best medical interest of the patient because they were scared of getting the virus. And they thought by putting them on respirators, it would somehow protect the people, the nurses, the doctors, other patients because their air would be recirculated into their own body and they wouldn't be spreading their COVID germs around there. Fear is a very, very good motivator, almost as good as financial motivation. All right, back to the video. When I had on John Baudouin Sr. Uh, just recently, who was explaining to me that the spike in renal failure, reports of renal failure, in fact, didn't coincide with the authorization to prescribe remdesivir. It coincided with the financial incentivizing to diagnose with remdesivir uh, as, a, as a treatment. That's when you notice the spike in renal. So the financial aspect of it it creates the ecosystem, it creates the environment for it. And so this fact check which says doctors would not be so unscrupulous to misdiagnose, et cetera, et cetera, because that would violate their Hippocratic oath. Well, things are going fast in a pandemic. Someone comes into the hospital with certain symptoms. It's the logical thing to do. Uh, and it certainly explains how influenza diagnoses, infections, deaths, basically went to zero. This is what we call an orgy of evidence. No many orgies I had as a homicide cop. How many? None. This was all arranged. It's one heck of a rabbit hole to go down. And uh, at the end of the day, money corrupts everything. And at the end of the day, there are things that cannot and do not make sense. And people are very willing just to forgive and forget and move on. That's behind us. The wholesale corruption of the healthcare system, the health authority system, governments, everything, wholesale corruption for financial gain, for narrative control, for compliance control. If the masks and the social distancing did not work for COVID, then why continue to implement it? Make sense of that without reflexively thinking control, subordination of a population. Uh, but try to make sense of any of this. It can't make sense unless you adopt a nefarious, financially motivated uh, modus operandi. That was my rabbit hole thought process of this very question. Uh, it's weird and can be very difficult to make sense of without going into dark places. All right, well, this is a beautiful, um, it's a beautiful forest. I mean, this is beautiful weather. You know what to do if you like this stuff. Like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Join our vivabarnslaw.locals.com community uh, where you can partake in this aggregate wealth of knowledge, a community that knows its stuff, that keeps others in check, that share knowledge and information with other members of the community so that we can all, as a whole, get much smarter, understand what's going on, and react better to the world around us. Go. Merry Christmas, and I'll see you before New Year's, but Happy New Year's. The first sign of corruption in a society that is still alive is that the end justifies the means. Georges Bernanos. I can't say I understand this, but it sounds deep.